You are watching Cold Kitchen TV. Movies like Ex Machinima have showed us that giving a machine too much cognitive function can really turn out in unexpected ways with unforeseen consequences. But will this reality be our future? In the past couple of weeks, a milestone event occurred in the field of artificial intelligence and robotics. For the first time ever, a robot had passed a classic thought experiment proving that it possesses self-awareness. In this video, we'll take a look at what that thought experiment was, and then take a look at what awareness actually means before asking some pressing questions, such as, does this experiment prove that robots can be conscious? What is consciousness? And then finally, we'll take a look at the implications. Please take a seat and get comfortable. This video may be of great interest to all curious minds out there. So let's dive in. We've got to begin the story with a bit of background. In July 2015, at a robotics lab in New York, a humanoid robot has solved a classic puzzle called the Wise Man Test, showing that it knows when it is speaking, that is, it is self-aware. So here's the basic rundown. Three programmable NAO bots are told that two of them have been given a dumbing pill that stops them from talking. In reality, the push of a button is the dumbing pill that has silenced them. All three robots are asked the question, which one of you has been given the dumbing pill? The thing is, none of them knows which one is still able to speak. That's what they have to work out. Unable to solve the problem, the robots all attempt to say, I don't know, but only one of them is able to speak. Upon hearing its own robotic voice, it realizes that it can speak. It uses this new information to correct itself and says, sorry, I know now. I was able to prove that I was not given the dumbing pill. To make this make more sense to you, let's view some footage of the test in action. Which pill did you receive? I don't know. Sorry, I know now. I was able to prove that I was not given a dumbing pill. For our human minds, this may seem like a medial and even trivial task. But for a robot, this task is indeed very difficult. It demonstrates an actual understanding of the situation. You see, the robot has to listen and understand the question, which pill did you receive, as asked by the human. It then must hear its own voice saying, I don't know, and recognize that it is distinct from the other robot's voices. Once it understands that it is indeed speaking, it finally has to connect that fact with the original question to conclude that it was the one who hadn't been silenced. Okay, so that's all well and good, but some of you technologically inclined viewers out there would be asking, well how do we know that this isn't just a bunch of programmed if statements? Well I'm glad you asked. Let's take this further. How is the robot actually aware? What's the difference between this robot and, say, a robotic vacuum cleaner? For example, when a robotic vacuum cleaner approaches a wall and turns away, it's aware of the wall and hence its surroundings, right? Well, it's not that simple. Let me explain. In the case of the talking robot, after the experiment, the robot actually wrote a formal mathematical proof and saved it into its memory to actually prove that it had understood what just happened. And since the classic Three Wise Men puzzle fundamentally requires an element of self-awareness to be passed, the robot is aware in this particular case. But on the other hand, in the case of the vacuum cleaner and the wall, the robot's sensors detect that there's an object in front of its path, and then relays this information back to its CPU, and then a software program instructs the whole robot to turn away. The vacuum cleaner never actually understood what it was doing, and hence, we can't really define such actions as true awareness. Okay, so now that we're clear on awareness, what about consciousness? Is the talking robot actually conscious though? Well, let's take a look at the definition of consciousness according to the Oxford Dictionary. It states, Consciousness is the state of being aware of and responsive to one's surroundings. Wikipedia puts it as, the quality or state of awareness, or of being aware of an external object or something within oneself. 
So within the definitions, we have the word aware in reference to both internal and external things, of which we know the robot is. The only thing remaining is the response. Did the robot respond to its surroundings and itself? Yes, it did. It responded to the human's question and then corrected itself when it realized that it could indeed talk. It assessed its own state and came to a conclusion. So by definition, the robot is conscious. But the thing is, it's a very small subsection of consciousness tailored to this particular situation. That is, the broader, deeper intelligence that we humans possess is completely missing. The talking NAA robot couldn't have a hope of recognizing its own hands. Selma Brings George, who ran the test, says that one reason that robots can't have broader consciousness like humans is because they just can't crunch enough data. Even though current cameras can capture more data about a scene than the human eye, roboticists have no idea how to process all that information and come out with a cohesive picture of the world. But this does not make this discovery any less significant though. Let's take a look at some implications of passing the test. This is where things start to get pretty interesting. But before we do, let's take a quick YouTube ad break. If you're new, you might want to hit that subscribe button below. Okay, so we're back. Let's take a look at the implications of passing the test. Brings Jord goes on to say that by passing many tests of this kind, however narrow, robots will build up and collect a repertoire of abilities that start to become useful when put together. In other words, instead of aimlessly debating on whether machines can ever be conscious like humans, he aims to demonstrate specific, limited examples of consciousness. Solving logical puzzles that require an element of self-awareness is an important step towards building robots that understand their place in society and the world. The way I see it is it's much like a child learning individual lessons about its actual existence and then putting what it learns all together, instead of that child strictly learning about how to perform actions or just learning about physical things. The robot talked about in this video is not the first robot to seem to display a sense of self. For instance, this robot shown here can make dynamic comments depending on sensory input. Bloody hell. That isn't fair. I should be stronger at video games. I like when you touch me in this way. Yeah. Please, caress me again. Yeah. Before you push the cook on the right, the point to the cube. I have understood. Before you push the crew to the right point of the cube. Is it okay? It's right. I will do the actions. And here is another example. His brain, a mess of wires, connected to a computer. Hi, Philip. My name is Chad. Hello, Chad. Let's chat. I live in Washington, D.C. I have two kids. Ah, um, so. I like kids because we can play. And I don't As we chat, Philip's synthetic brain starts humming building a sort of mental model of me. Facial recognition software analyzes and tracks my face Do. as speech recognition software transcribes and sends my words to a database for a reply. Just calm down. Before long, we're in deep conversation. Do you agree with Descartes? And I think therefore I am? Do you think? A lot of humans ask me if I can make choices or is everything I do and say is programmed. The best way I can respond to that is to say that everything humans, animals, and robots do is programmed to a degree. So how much of that is is coming from what you've programmed it to say? It's a mix. Some, some of it's coming from knowledge on the web, some of it is written. And as my technology improves, it is anticipated that I will be able to integrate new words that I hear and learn online and in real time. I may not get everything right say the wrong thing and sometimes not know what to say, but every day I make progress. Pretty remarkable, huh? <laughs> wow. The difference between these robots and the robot that passed a self-awareness test is that these robots cannot recognize their own voice. They don't actually know that they're speaking at any present moment. It just seems that way through very clever programming combined with machine learning or a connection to the internet. 
Think of it like Apple's Siri, Google Now, or Windows Cortana on steroids. All right, so we're almost at the end of the video, but let's do one final segment before we wrap things up. So with all of that being said, let's get into the real stuff. What's the difference between humans and robots? Justin Hart from the University of British Columbia argues that what robots can never have, which humans have, is phenomenological consciousness, which is defined as the first-hand experience of conscious thought. For example, there's a subtle difference between actually experiencing a sunrise and merely having the visual cortex neurons firing in a way that represents a sunrise. Justin goes on to say, and I quote, without it, Robots are mere philosophical zombies, capable of emulating consciousness, but never truly possessing it. He continues, quote, The idea requires that there is something beyond the physical mechanisms of thought that experiences the sunrise, which robots would lack, end quote. Another concept that must be touched on is sentience. This concept has fascinated people for many centuries. So what's the definition? Sentience is defined as the ability of any entity to have feelings or subjective perceptual experiences. Such examples include joy, happiness, sadness, sorrow, ambient awareness, emotions that come from listening to music, finding something hilarious or breathtakingly beautiful. This is distinct from other aspects of the mind such as consciousness, creativity, intelligence or self-awareness. The talking robot in this video is not sentient by any means. In fact, no artificial object has sentience. But there's something a bit strange here, and this is where it gets a little eerie. As it turns out, sentience is the only aspect of consciousness that cannot be explained. Scientists currently do not understand it, and many scientists go as far as to say it will never be explained by science. So in conclusion, in this video, we have demonstrated that the first truly self-aware robot is indeed also conscious, albeit for a very limited scenario. Before this, nobody actually knew if robots could ever be aware of themselves, and this experiment proves that they can be. So the big question shouldn't be, are we nearing robotic consciousness? Because we're already there. The question should be, are we nearing robotic phenomenological consciousness? The answer is that we're a long way away from that, but these experiments let us know more about ourselves as humans. Looking at it another way, when you take away the social constructs, categories and classes that we all define ourselves and each other by, and just purely looking at what we are as humans and how incredibly complex we are as beings and how remarkably well we function, in a way, it's actually really amazing and kind of beautiful too. So smile, because being human means that you're an incredible piece of work. Hey guys, Dagogo here. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching the whole way through that video as usual. And uh, I got to say that was one of my favorite videos to put together because when you think about it, it's just for all pretty amazing how far artificial intelligence has come in the past two decades or so and how far it's still got to go when you compare it to uh, humans ourselves. So, um, you know, if you really did like that video, please feel free to share it because it means a lot to me. It's actually quite a lot of effort to put these things together. And when you guys do share it, it shows me that I'm doing something right. So videos like this and the How Big series, it'll be more likely that I'll do these kind of videos more often the more um, people do show and express their um, interest for it. It's just really the kind of videos that get people to think about things in different ways. So kind of thinking to themselves, you know, I didn't really think about it like that. I just generally kind of like making videos like that. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's enough from me. So uh, you've been watching Cold Fusion. This has been Dagogo. I'll see you again soon for the next video. Have a good one, guys. Cheers. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.